Today, we're breaking down the shots in the timeline. So we're just gonna go shot by shot in here and kind of break this down. So starting with this opening shot, you're watching this, you see it's the bottle on a table and then it drops through the floor. So actually I had somebody even say, where's the table? So there's a little trick to it. Uh, I started with the reflection. This, this is actually upside down. Here is the original shot. And let's actually get rid of this and this and this. And it actually came in, pointed down at the reflection and then tilted up. Now you have here, because it's, it's upside down now, you have this color grade that's over the top of it. And that's where you see this, this moving across. So you see it moving there. So, which that's a second I believe it's a, yeah, it's a second lumetric color. So there's the mask. So what this did, see now if I take this and I flip it back the other way. See without this, if I get rid of that lumetric color, it's so much darker. Really what I did is I just brightened it up to try to help hide the fact that it's a reflection. And it is not the original. So I'm just cutting like right between the reflection here. To brighten that up so we have our next critical shot here uh, which is right here which I think is kind of like the 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 forefront especially with the fire and the flare and the sparks and now there's a lot of names for this uh, some people call it a dolly shot some people call it vertigo effects you know we got that background shrinking or expanding coming closer to it a lot of time it's done this other way around it's done this direction right to where the background gets pulled in closer you can look it up exactly how to do it basically it is you push in or pull out of your subject and at the same time you zoom the opposite direction so if you're pushing in you zoom out if you're pulling out you zoom in so uh which you don't have to do it these days you can just physically or you can just digitally rather uh do the zoom afterwards so let's just take this and let's pull it over here. And this is a 2,521%. Here is my dolly zoom right here. So, and I just faded this, it faded in before that little glitch there, so I didn't need to worry about it. But there's the dolly zoom, and then I get to the end and I've duplicated the clip, right? Right, so the first one is reversed, and then the second one is in, it's an exact duplicated, but if we go to speed duration, it is not reversed. So it picks up exactly where this one left off. I did do a morph cut to just make it blend a little bit more here. And then I just let it zoom out. But at the same time, once I've nested these together and that I've sped it up, right? So if we go back over here. Now, when I get here, you can see my keyframes right here. Here you go. And then when I get to the end of the shot, right? Where it's, it's gonna stop and it's zoomed out, I continued the zoom digitally by just pushing the entire picture away. And that's what it ends up looking like. So it's kind of a hard, hard pull out there. Bah. So there, and when you add, you add the fire on top, you add the anamorphic flare, boom. And then I'd fade right into another shot behind it, which is the whiskey glass glass which is the whiskey glass so there's a pull out boom and right into the next shot which this one's quick so I start in quick on the next one and then slow it down with the speed ramp 
So I initially, I wanted to have, this This shot to me had like a weightless feeling to it, right? Especially since it's, it's, it's slowly, the shot is moving up. And then you have uh, this glitter also that is has this weightless like moving. Where this, this edit was longer here. So right here where this cut was, this was originally longer. And I wanted another weightless shot in there. And I thought, I thought the edit, you know, was not done. I mean, I guess it wasn't. But, you know, I, I may have never put this out whatsoever. So, and by just, you know, because setting up just takes so long, by just cutting it and putting it together, putting it out, moving on, uh, I think it was the right thing to do. So, it's just a simple uh, speed ramp here. You know, I haven't even really changed it a whole lot to smooth it out, just a little bit. Uh, but I speed ramped the shot and the glitter also. So both of them. So if we get rid of this shot, then we just have the glitter, which you can also see a little trick here, which the glitter has a mask so that when I put this back in there, the glitter is now between the bottle and behind the bottle, but it is not in front of these ice cubes. Now it's a small, it's a small thing. And now when you look at it again, you may see it. But I think it's something that kind of fits in subconsciously that it just it, I feel like it gives it some more depth so like you could have a layer of this that is in front of maybe you want to do a layer in front of the ice cubes and then you do another layer that's a little lighter in front of the uh, knob creep bottle and then you do another layer that's behind that and you could even take some blur and add some blur on the background layer the one that's in the furthest you could even add some more blur on the one that's closest also because the ice cubes are they're out of focus so adding these little details really in knowing all the tools in your toolkit so that you can use them uh is a is a critical step really simple shot i used a c stand here it is kind of bouncing a little bit the ball is kind of moving a little more than i wanted um i use a i love overlays this is an overlay right here we want to get rid of that streak that streak, I just think adds so much. Like really the shot is not that blue, right? But you add that in it, it just gives this icy, a little more icy feel to it. So if I take off the motion effects, that's where the streak should be the entire time. See it's in the top there. But if I do here, and I just added some motion to it, and I simply, there's only two keyframes there. You know, there's a start and there's a finish. So it would move along with it. So um, this one, I believe, was just a handheld shot uh, with the probe lens. So I don't think this was on the slider at all. So there you go. And you got this one. So let's look. Let's take a look at this shot here um, first, which this was not here. And this was original. This is another one of those shots that I was unsatisfied with and I didn't like. So here's actually outside. I wrapped it in the saran wrap to keep it dry. This is the unedited shot. Now slowed down, added color, and almost pretty much the final shot. There's the actual final shot. So I had drawn a mask around it. So this originally had a mask so I could try to transition between the two. And it just, it never felt right. I mean, I thought it looked it looks okay, but I, I found this, which was just stock footage, and it really made it made it pop. So now the original original piece here, though, let's get rid of the lumetric color. So this is what the first one looked like. It's actually very blue, and matter of fact, so it wasn't alpha, so I didn't have to change the blend mode. It fit right in. See, and this would not have worked at all, that blue. So, and all I did on here was I went all the way with the temperature and then I went down to the color wheels here and I pulled this more of a, you know, the shadows and midtones to try to match, you know, the, the color of the whiskey, which really I used, I didn't use whiskey here. I used tea because, you know, whiskey is too expensive. <laughs> so this shot right here, which I absolutely love, 
Um, I'm not sure if it's obvious what it is. You guys can tell me if it's obvious. Um, but it's the top of the bottle before I opened it. Uh, and I just, I really love the way this came out with the green and the yellow on the top of the bottle. And this is just a handheld shot. I have a couple of those extension tubes, I believe on the 50 millimeter. So they turns, turns any lens into a macro lens. And then here. So I think it, it feels also this little transition here. It feels like this big flash that happens, but it's not. It's just one, one little simple line. You know, when you're editing and you're, you're doing things, a lot of times really simple movements and really simple things add a lot. You don't have to move crazy, sometimes tiny, tiny movements. When you move just a little bit in one and then in the next one, you finish that movement in two different clips. I mean, it's, it's awesome. See, that was with the 50 mil. And this, this 50 mil, I still have not bought like an expensive 50 mil. This is still the nifty 50. I think it's 200 bucks. Um, use it all the time. So I hope that was helpful guys and gals. So here's just a few shots, uh, some more BTS pulling out the probe lens. Originally I had this light under it. I turned out not to use that shot cause I didn't like that little led in there. Uh, this is actually with a piece of tracing paper on the back, made it glow really nice. Uh, and then the, this is one of the final shots where I dipped down below the glass and just put it, played it in reverse. Same shot as the opening one again, setting up the, uh, the LED again. This, this little LED was pivotal. Uh, and there's another one. You can see like the hair on there. It was so hard to keep this clean, to be honest. So if this video actually turns out to be a hit, uh, I have a few more planned where I talk about the music editing that I did in this, maybe a quick lighting breakdown because I wore this GoPro the whole time. Uh, so like and subscribe. With Wham! Hot damn.